right? Who loves AI here? Who knows what AI is? AI is confusing, or AI is sometimes intimidating. But uh, let's play the game first. Spot the difference. There's 12 of them, 11 of them. I'm, climb I'm timing you. You can't spot it all, but uh, look at it. It's, it's taking a lot of time, and it's time that's actually taking away from you if you were a doctor. A doctor is really busy every day. Uh, guys, you probably work 20, three, four shifts, 20 hours a day. Here's the questions. Can AI actually replace your job? Are we have, do we have some fear? But what can we do? We have 47 million patients data. What are we gonna do with it, with that much make of value? So go back to here. Hey, how many of you can figure that out? In 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds? Probably not. So time, back to time. What is time? Time is money. Uh, I stole every one of you, you guys' time right now. You should be working, but you're here. But let me give you, give you some of them back to you. So you, we're losing it. Why are we losing it? Here's the fact. 46,000 to 122,000 doctors that we, uh, we're going to be in shortage uh, by 2032. So, you know, we don't have enough doctors. So that means we don't have enough time. So how are we going to give you some of the time back to you? On the left-hand side, you have a surgeon, cardiologist, is willing to work really hard, three shifts a day. On the other side, we have an AI robot that's willing to take over your job 30 times faster and work 24 seven. So the question is, can AI replace doctors? A better word, can actual AI can empower you? So, all right, if it can do that, right? So if we gotta first know what AI is, maybe we could build this system. So what's AI? Uh, how many of you know what it is? Uh, you probably recognize a few words on top. Confusing, uh, machine learning, deep learning. It's intimidating all the time. Forget that. Pick, make it dumb English. Artificial intelligence is an area of computer science that emphasizes the creation of the intelligence machine that works and reacts like human. That's also confusing. Make it easier. So my version of AI is AI is nothing more than like raising a smart child. You know how to raise a child, you feed him a lot of books, you teach him the right thing, and you, you stuff 20 years of medical school in just weeks. There you go, you create your own doctor. Okay, that seems easy. So let's learn about how to build a human first. So human process requires learning, right? If I, every day, uh, you can learn it from school, you can go to the schoolyard and know how to play ball, and you learn and unlearn every day. What I teach you today right here, could not, could be irrelevant tomorrow, because you learn new stuff. So, so what's machine learning? Machine learning, no, you're just training a robot. If I'm teaching a child how to be smart, there's also data need to be feed, fed into it. What's important, what are the ingredients? Images, voices, right? Senses, the baby loves to lick and touch. That's how they learn at first. Um, three keys that is also important to be good in machine learning and to creating AI is clean data, very clean, as Richard mentions, and also supervised machine learning, and also big data. What are those three? Clean data. Um, I got three years old. I cannot be stressed enough that I'm not gonna let him watch SpongeBob all day. <laughs> He's not gonna be a smart kid. I need clean data. If it's medical data, we need good medical records or anything relevant. So um, supervised machine learning. So having data, machine learning means I'll just dump it to you, let my child read it. He's not gonna create intelligence. You, you need to teach him, like a teacher, right? You have to pass the intelligence to a child. But clinical domains is important. If I were a doctor, I'm gonna teach my child to be a doctor, a robot. I better be damn sure you know what I'm saying, teaching him the right thing. What happens if you just don't teach him right? You get this robot in here, just give you a wrong answer. So quality of books matter, mentioned about big data, so uh, I could stuff one year of data in his brain, then it's gonna be one year school, college kid. Uh, I could stuff 20 years in it, it will be the more data, the better, to get you smarter. And a little bit of difference is you have different dynamics of how to create data, so it's also reinforced machine learning. You know, I treat this as a child, sometimes they need uh, um, rewards too. So that's pretty much it to create AI, so Let's build it. 
I, I want to change the word from AI to augmented intelligence. It's less intimidating. We're not here to replace your job. We're here to help you. So what are the things we can do with AI now? So, all right, let's, let's try to do some efficient diagnosis. Because this is the most important key is that if you diagnose first, get it right, then you can get a treatment right. Here's some fun fact. 790,000 Americans is gonna have strokes. 39% of them misdiagnosed for stroke every year. Everything read by ECG data. How long does a cardiologist take it? 40 seconds. That's how this one life is lost. That's how long a cardiologist take to, to read the data. And you got 39% incorrect. What's ECG data? These are the stuff. I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm not a medical doctor, but to me, I have to figure out over 120 different types of symptoms from these lines. Anyone doctors in here know what that is? You got 40 seconds? Somebody's live in your hands. Well, let's try to replace that. So we go back to the, the mechanic, right? We have big data. Feed the big, big data in the brain. We have quality of data. Feed it in the brain. Uh, it will annotate it. We need doctors to pass on intelligence and train the database. You know, we need a good platform. We're a partner with Intel and lots of coffee. You gotta train this long time. It just doesn't happen one day. Put in the doctors. There you go, you build your own AI robot. So what can it do? Here's what it can do. It can process a speed 30 times faster than human. Accuracy up to 99%. Emotional bias, none. Sometimes when you have African Americans say, oh, you're prevailing heart disease, no. Uh, that's not gonna happen, no bias. Numbers shift 24 seven. It's not gonna take over your job, but here's a special power because of deep learning. It can detect 100 plus symptoms before you have a potential cardiac arrest. So you get a better treatment options. What else can you use this brain? You have two different options. You can have a cloud model, now you build a brain. Cloud model, you can build the, uh, the edge device off cloud, IoT. Where can you put it? You can put it in the clinical trial, skill rehab, hospital network, surgery center, and you can put in IoT devices, telehealth, ambulatory, remote patient monitoring, wearable. I have one on my hand. You've seen those before. I put the brain into emergency services. Helicopter ride. Data go to the hospital before you actually know to know exactly what kind of stents, drugs to be needed for the surgery. Where else can you put it? Everywhere. So at the end of the day, the story goes, AI is not gonna take over your job. AI is gonna help you have better decisions, so it's gonna give you more jobs. At the end of the day, you need empathy to be a doctor, so you can spend more time, probably do more time doing this. You can spend time doing your kids, because uh, no one wants to work 24 seven, but uh, that's what AI is gonna do for you. Uh, that's the story.